so today I'm working on one of the sketches that I'll be uh, making for the oil painting that I'll be working on next. So when you're using a washi tape like this on your sketchbook, you can stick it a couple of times on any other surface, either that or stick it on surface of any any clothing. So this does what this takes away the extra glue that is had on the surface and it prevents you from tearing up the pages later on so that is a hack that i learned and it's quite helpful i do it a couple of times on my clothes and then i go ahead and stick it on So this is the reference and I'm really happy that I took this picture. Now I'll be working on the sketch and later on the main oil painting. I feel children are very kind and innocent. Like whatever you teach them, they think that that is only right. And if it is coming from someone close, like a family member, they believe in it without even asking any questions. So I think it is only after growing up that they realize uh, that it's okay to start questioning things. Uh, there is a brief phase of life when children are most curious and uh, it's in the hands of the people around them, especially uh, their parents. Uh, to either nourish their curiosity or shut them up. Letting them ask questions and en encouraging them to ask more is not that easy. Uh, yes, it can be annoying, but only then children ask more questions and also uh, they are not hesitant to ask more as they grow if they are encouraged enough. It all starts here when parents tell their kids that it's only the questions that they know answers to are valuable and other questions those that are not really known by them are quite useless. Uh, as a kid my father and my grandfather both encouraged me to ask questions and both of them are really amazing teachers. They taught me lots of math problems. I sometimes wouldn't like it, but then I kind of liked that time of lessons with them. That was the time of my childhood that I truly cherish. My mom is more creative. I think I have got my creativity from my mom. She always encouraged me to draw and paint. She really made sure that I attended art classes during my summer vacations and even after the summer vacations were over she would always encourage me to continue them to be honest i did not always love it because
because I had to manage my school, my assignments, tuitions and then art class was something that I was doing on the top of that. It was not a lot of efforts for me because I enjoyed it but managing time was tough and art classes were in fun at school. So even I started thinking that if it is not that good, if the experience is not that great at school, I might as well take some classes outside of it, even if it is once a week or you know twice a week. Some teachers really make your experiences with different kind of subjects very bad. I loved art so much when I was a kid, but still the teacher that we had at school made art something that I stopped looking forward to. If I think today, I always feel that if the teacher was a little better, I could have enjoyed my classes even at school and I would not blame my school for, you know, killing my creativity entirely at that time. My school always made me feel that art was not something important and the teacher made me feel that creating itself was not important and all the other things related to it are. So you see creativity was not very encouraged at my school and the part of me who gave up art at that time till today knows what is the importance of encouragement that is why i really feel that later on in my life i would try and encourage as many people as i can in my life to create art and be a creative and live a life creatively because I always wanted to be that person who I never got in my life. Well, my mom was always there, but you know, in my surroundings, in my school or as a mentor, there was really a scarcity of people elder to me who can I look up to and you know kind of follow their path in school we had an art teacher who was very strict i have not seen him draw or paint anything I think more than 10 times in the 6 years that he used to be our art teacher. The only thing that I remember very clearly about him was that he used to beat the sh** out of the students who would forget to bring their sketchbooks to class. I remember being so scared that if I ever forgot my sketchbook and even my friends did this we would all go to other classes and ask if other students had their sketchbooks so that they can lend it to us for one period. It was so toxic that he would make the students who forgot their sketchbooks to stand in a row and then he would slap them or punish them by beating them with a scale. How toxic and wrong was that? And how can anyone be like that in a school environment? I still wonder how someone can be creative in such an environment. I could not even fathom. I was only it was the only fear in that classroom and this went on for six long years. So I am more than thankful to my mom who would enroll me and my sisters for art classes that were out of the schools and the teachers I got there were truly good, kind and great artists as well. 
till to this day i thank them for teaching me so much and i feel whatever fundamentals i got i got it from them i never really got to learn anything related to art from my school they wouldn't really encourage us to be creatives if only it was for that one art class they could have easily cancelled it if it was not there in our curriculum so after having such bad experience in my school uh, i i could never even think about going into such an uh, any kind of creative field let alone taking a creative path a school that did not even encourage us to be creatives um it's all not their fault some of it is our fault too uh, i don't know uh, maybe we were kids and we were just trying to you know survive the environment of competition and a place which would only encourage academics and yeah i was very uh, academically good student and throughout my school i always tried to get good grades and perform well because that was encouraged at home and in school as well so after my school i never really thought i mean i did think of getting into a design field but uh, anything more than that or even remotely close to being an artist never crossed my mind when i think about why i did not stand up for myself or be more assertive about my art and being a creative i think that i was under a lot of pressure if navigating all of that was so difficult now just imagine how difficult that must have been for a 12 year old i know we weren't much exposed to different type of creative careers available back then but i think we can change that now as a famous quote by mahatma gandhi said be the change you want to see in the world i agree to that so much if we thought something that happened with us was not fair or was wrong we can now do our parts and try not to repeat that pattern or else our future generations will have the same same kind of issues we can do our parts and try to empower them surely they'll have their own set of problems to deal with but let's try our best to not being an addition to them So while the sketch dries I quickly wanted to talk about uh why we need to sketch before uh going for the big project or the big piece that you're going to work on so I have learned this from other different artists that it's always a good idea to first get a taste of how the composition is going to be how the different shades are going to be and uh before trying it out on a big surface just quickly get a quick sketch 
you don't have to work on the details there just have to get an idea about the colors the composition the shapes and um, the shadows and various things like that so once you get an idea i personally feel very confident to now get go on the bigger piece and work on the canvases and stuff like that and it's also very fun to first work in the sketchbook that way you feel that your uh, sketchbook is also filling up and it's like a quick warm up routine that you do before you paint on the bigger surface so if you're also trying to work on bigger surfaces give this a try first sketch out the idea or whatever you have in mind and then uh, start on the bigger surface So this is the process of gessoing. Uh, gesso is basically a primer that we use to prime the surfaces on which we oil paint. If you don't know about gesso or what gesso is, you can refer to my oil painting basics video in which I have explained uh, from very basics about different components of an oil painting or different steps that you need to follow for oil painting so uh, gesso basically helps uh, to prime the surface and that helps in preventing the absorption of oil paint on the surface that you're using so here I'm using a stretched canvas and I'm using a gesso to prime the surface we mix the gesso with some amount of water and then we spread it out on the surface with the help of a flat brush so that way there is a barrier formed between the surface and your oil paint that you're going to be using on the surface but one thing that you absolutely need to keep in mind is that the layer of gesso that you are applying on the surface should be very even because if the surface is uneven after you have gessoed it then there is no point of gessoing right it will create um, roughness it will create unevenness and you won't be able to paint properly in case the surface you're working with is rough and uneven it will only make your oil painting or painting process in general very uncomfortable and rough you can make the surface even or plain textured by using a sandpaper like after gessoing you can just rub a sandpaper over it after the gesso dries So up next we are preparing for the underpainting that we are going to do next. For the underpainting I use the burnt sienna color. I have recently started using acrylics for the underpainting. Underpaintings are basically to create that uh, surface or to create that first layer on which I can work on and for that to take so much of my time to dry it does not make any sense to use oil paint for the underpainting so i switched very recently to acrylic paints for the underpainting so that it can dry quickly and i can start working on it fast so for that uh, one thing that needs to be done is to dilute the acrylic paint because we don't want a very thick underpainting. Underpaintings are just to create a layer of color 
uh, I prefer any shade that is related to brown uh, I guess brown is not the correct word but any shade related to sienna that creates a colored a uh, layer because on um, different uh, most of the colors look better uh, on the burnt sienna shade I have seen rather than on being plain white surface so that is one of the reasons for first painting and first going on with an underpainting so there are two things that you need to keep in mind while underpainting first is making the layer of underpainting extremely thin and second is to let it dry completely before you start working with your oil paints on the underpainting so with this piece i decided that i won't be painting the edges so for the longest time i have always painted the edges of my paintings but with this piece i thought that i'll try and leave the edges and for that i covered the edges with the kwashi tape so that the paint does not go or flow into the edges and yeah i wanted to see how that goes the first step is to cover the canvas with a thin coat of burnt sienna and then dry it uh, you can also let it dry naturally or i use a blow dryer here for drying that layer or the coating and after the surface dries i uh, draw the grids on it so for gridding i use an app that i have on my phone and after i have my grids on my reference i draw similar grids on the canvas stretched canvas it definitely takes some measurements to get the grids right but once you have done it it pretty much helps with the accuracy of the painting i do not take help of the grids all the time most of my paintings are without any grids but with this one i thought that it will be nice to have some uh, accuracy with the original reference After drawing the grids, the next step is to start working on a simple outline that you could pick up from the reference and post working on the outline we work on the shadows and the shades that you can see on the reference. So these are basically two next steps that we follow when we paint the underpainting. So I know that I diverted a little off topic from the actual topic of this video but I really wanted to walk you all through the process that I follow while oil painting. I spoke about the process of oil painting and how I go about it and what are the materials that I use in my one of the previous videos but in that i couldn't really show anything so i thought that it would be nice if i could show while i do it actually i even wanted to show you all of this real time but that was making the video too long so coming back to the real topic of this video i just wanted to say that there is no harm in encouraging a little bit more creativity in schools i think our education system and schools can definitely do better when it comes to encouraging creativity in schools but i also don't want to blame it on the schools completely it also starts at home 
and the environment and the surroundings that we have um, at our homes so that also plays a very big and important role in our lives uh, when it comes to living a life creatively like for example uh, even if the art scene was not so great at my school uh, at my home my mom really made sure that we learned and grew to be creatives so that was really a positive side and till this date till today i thank my mom for really encouraging uh, whether or not i understood that at that time but um, i really thank her for keep trying and i i realized all of this quite later in life when i was really stuck in a very difficult phase in my life but it all started making sense it all made sense then that why uh, it was really important why being a creative was a very important part of my life so yeah so while i was growing up uh, there were jobs that were seen as respectable jobs or that i or my parents or i saw my relatives putting them as respectable jobs so what happened was after i grew up i started seeing only those jobs as respectable and it created a lot of conformational issues for me uh, when i realized that art is something that i wanted to do making art if you do not see this as something respectable or if this has to be only considered as something as just a hobby uh, so i feel that this has to be a part of our curriculum or this should be a part of our educational system that the students should be inspired or guided or even motivated to try different things try different uh, career paths so that they do not feel bounded or put inside the box or even if when they explore these things by themselves they do not feel like they have to conform in certain rules and regulations like i did i felt like i had to follow these rules i don't know who made them but uh, yeah i had to conform in them and if i don't then you know i'm something some weird kind of a person or some different who is not able to adjust in already made circumstances so yeah i think that way education and the education system in general of the country plays a very important role uh, and i really want this scenario to change in india because i speak for my country and i really want to want it to change out here i don't want children to feel like if they are thinking something out of the box or they are choosing unconventional career paths that they are doing something weird or uh, they have to somehow conform into already set notions already set paths you know they taught us to take the road less traveled or road not taken but they do they really want you to um, that is my question here Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I just wanted to say that all the views and opinions in this video are mine and uh, they are not here to or I did not put them up here to blame anyone or criticize anyone. I just wanted to put up what I thought and I just wanted to put it out there. 
uh, about what my thoughts are and what my experiences were growing up and what I felt was wrong but yeah you all are free to give your opinions and I guess I am free to share some of mine some experiences were not so good so I think sharing does one thing for sure it reduces our pain it reduces the level of trauma that we have had and yeah i think art community over here on youtube is quite accepting or at least i feel little light after sharing it with all of you so yeah with this i like to end this video and i hope you having a good day good night or good evening wherever you are while you're watching this and i will see you soon and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like the videos and um, also like the video it helps to reach to more artists and more like-minded people and also do leave a comment if you thought it was anything that resonated with you or anything in general that you felt after watching this video that will also help me and my channel to grow so yeah bye bye